that. <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for today's Business First Conversation. Um, these programs are sponsored by Blue Cross Blue Shield, and we thank them for that support. My name is P.D. Stefanik, and I'm with Southwest Michigan First. Um, you know, we do these programs specifically to bring together companies of all sizes and to share some um, programs that we think will help strengthen you, grow your companies, and just make our community much stronger. So we're gonna to bring together um, some experts to talk about things that are important to you and your businesses. So before we get started on that, just a couple of reminders. We will be recording this program. Um, so please focus on what's being said. We'll also be sharing all of the presentations with you and contact information. So please focus on what, what we're talking about. Also use the chat box. That's where we will be fielding questions for the program. Um, and you'll see that that's an easy option to use and it will keep you up to date on what's happening there. This morning, we will be joined by three experts in the area of exporting, importing, and global sourcing. Kendra Quo, who's the director for the Grand Rapids Office for U.S. Commercial Services, part of the U.S. Department of Commerce. Weiwei Liu, who's with the MEDC, Michigan Economic Development Corporation, as the International Trade Development Manager and Sonia Johnson, who's the Associate Director at the Van Andel Global um, Trade Center. The format for today's program, um, each expert will give a brief presentation, uh, we'll have a panel discussion, and then we'll be answering your questions that come up. So to go ahead and get started, I'd like to introduce Kendra Quo, who will kick off the program. Kendra, up to you. Good morning. Thank you, Petey. And thank you, Kelsey and Jill and the team for having me. It's my pleasure to be here with you this morning. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about the U.S. Commercial Service, which is part of the Department of Commerce. We are the export promotion arm of the International Trade Administration. So we are federal government, uh, but located here in West Michigan. Next slide, please. And so this morning, I'm going to talk about our global network as part of the Department of Commerce and how we make an impact for the state and for our client companies here in Michigan, and also discuss some of our targeted business solutions to help companies in the area. Next slide. The Department of Commerce has a vast network of trade professionals. We have, like I mentioned, I'm here in, in Michigan. I do have five colleagues here in Michigan, uh, but we are connected to a broader network of trade professionals and experts across the country. Um, many of them are in DC, but we also have our secret sauce who's in our international countries um, in over 80 countries and over a thousand professionals. So I just wanted to give you a little bit of information of kind of how trade is going. Um, obviously due, due to the pandemic, things have been difficult. It's been a rough road for everyone, um, but in 2020, both the imports and exports fell um, a decent amount. And so our trade deficit grew. This kind of gives you just a month by month um, projection. You can get more detailed information on trade.gov on our trade data analysis website. And I'll also put a link in the chat for you too, where you can find some other local export statistics. Next slide. So looking in more depth, here are some things that um, you can see where things, uh, lots of exports were reduced, uh, specifically in the capital goods industry. Um, some of our suppliers and automotive components have been down nat naturally, um, but we are seeing a bounce back now that it's 2021 um, due to consumer demand here in the US, things are looking brighter and uh, China's imports and exports are also growing due to their manufacturing. So I think there, there will be some positive light here soon um, this summer. Uh, so I also wanted to highlight for you uh, in locally for Kalamazoo that in 2019, Kalamazoo was the 111th largest export uh, manufacturing uh, metropolitan area compared to Grand Rapids, which was 55th and Detroit was at six. I thought it was interesting that Kalamazoo's biggest market was actually Europe, which I always, when I talk to people, I usually say, oh, usually Mexico and Canada, but for some reason, Europe was really big for Kalamazoo, uh, perhaps some of your chemical manufacturers or um, other exports were com computers, machinery, 
transportation equipment and furniture. So again, I'll put that link in the chat where you can look for more information on that um, after my presentation, but I thought that was interesting. Next slide, please. So here in Michigan, I mentioned we have uh, some colleagues in Grand Rapids, myself and Ali Van Driel. And then we have an office in Pontiac area with Jennifer Mull as our director with uh, Eric Hudsorski and Eve Lerman. And uh, we also have some great interns now this summer. And um, we also have an office in downtown Detroit. So Jennifer is the manager for both Detroit and Pontiac. Michigan exports were largest in 2020 to Canada, Mexico, and China, and Germany and Korea. Compared to the US uh, overall exports, uh, Canada, Mexico, and, and China were the biggest markets, but Germany and Korea were unique to Michigan, whereas um, US exports were more to um, Germany, I think, and, or not, not Germany, sorry, uh, UK, and, um, no, I lost that, sorry. Um, well, we'll go on. But one, one other thing I wanted to point out to you is though even exports are, are down a little bit, they're still stronger than they were during the recession for Michigan. So I find some optimism in that, knowing that we'll be able to continue to bounce back better. Next slide, please. In Michigan and across the US, what the US Commercial Service does, our mission is to really help companies to export and to provide them with um, the tools that they need to succeed and gain a foothold in a foreign industry, foreign market. We do that providing day-to-day -day counseling, export counseling, uh, whether your stuff's stuck in customs or if you have a question about a trade document or if you have a question about certain labeling requirements, those are all things that we can help you address. But we also like to help companies uh, actually find a foreign buyer or a representative in a foreign market so that they can actually continue to grow those export sales. Uh, so we do that through business matchmaking. This last year, it's been a lot of virtual introductions, uh, but hopefully we hope to get back to actual one-on-one uh, -on -one meetings where our foreign service officers in the local embassies and consulates can help you meet with foreign buyers. And then we also provide market intelligence. So um, if you have questions about a specific market, we can Deep, dive deep into, the, into those countries um, through our country commercial guides as a broad overview, which you can find on trade.gov, or we can go into specific market research depending on what your needs are. From a headquarters perspective, we also provide assistance in helping recruit uh, foreign investors into the US, and uh, we can also provide commercial diplomacy and advocacy services. So if you are trying to sell to a foreign government, those are things that our uh, office in DC and with, with some help from me, I can also help you with that. Next slide. In addition to the, uh, those services, we also provide training and trade events. Uh, this is a good way for us to network and meet with new companies. Unfortunately, we haven't had a whole lot of action this last year, but we have been pretty busy with virtual events like this one. Uh, we have been doing a new series called Trade Talk Tuesdays, where it's a 20-minute uh, exports snippet and on a specific topic. And it's really, I didn't think anybody in the government could handle 20-minute seminar, but we, we've managed to do it and hold true to that. So that's been a great thing. Uh, Ali Van Driel has been leading the charge on those, and my colleagues across the state have been helping. We have one coming up in June 8th, uh, and we're going to focus on uh, how to connect with buyers without leaving your desk. So I think that will be a fun topic and very timely talk about virtual trade missions and other ways to meet with international buyers. We just concluded Export Tech. Actually, we're going to have our final session on Friday, and that's been a great partnership between the MEDC, the Commercial Service, and Grand Valley State University this semester. Um, we did market research for eight companies in Michigan, and we also provided them with a strategic export plan. So they've been working alongside us to try to create that. And then at the end of the session, each company uh, presents to the Michigan District Export Council volunteers, which is a group that's appointed by the Secretary of Commerce. And these volunteers help them guide them through the, their strategic plan and help them see uh, what markets are great and where they could think th things through a little bit more. So um, that's been a great program. Again, we had eight this year 
Uh, we look forward to doing it. Maybe, or we're going to do it again virtually in the fall and then maybe again, hopefully live next year. So my colleague Eve Lerman is going to take care of the one in the fall, uh, but we'll be recruiting uh, across the state. So more details to come on that. And then we also have uh, programs from DC where we partner with local trade show organizers. So lots of events in O'Hare and Vegas where we recruit international buyers to come to those shows. And oftentimes that's a good time to look and see who those international buyers are and encourage them to do a spinoff trip to Michigan or uh, connect with them at the show. If you have more questions about events, most of our things are on trade.gov and also partner events are located on exportmi.org. Next slide. So just to kind of give you an example of how, you know, all these services work together. Uh, one of our favorite clients is called Ready Rock International. They're in Traverse City and uh, Charlevoix and Petoskey area. Uh, they've worked, I, I, I highlight them because they've worked with many of our services of the people that you're going to hear today. Um, for me, they, we helped them to find a foreign uh, representative in Denmark and they were able to make a, a sale there. We've also helped them recently complete a sale uh, in Portugal. And so they've been very successful there. I know they've worked with MEDC um, in several markets, including France. Uh, they've also utilized services of Grand Valley State University to do some market research and attended some of our training that we've done like World Trade Week. So uh, the results, you know, they, they came to us looking for expert assistance. They had already been selling a little bit, but they wanted to be a little bit more strategic about what they were doing. So we helped them as a team evaluate what countries would be good, help them identify maybe where the tariffs were more favorable than other countries, and then get, came up with a plan for them to be more strategic and successful and help them get to market sooner. Um, again, they had all the tools that they needed to be successful already, they already were, but our goal is really just to help them navigate some of those problems, uh, anticipate any possible barriers and get them to market sooner and faster and be more productive. Next slide. So here's my team, my colleagues, I mentioned them before. Um, great, great people to work with. I'm very blessed to have them as teammates. And uh, Ellie and I would be your contacts here in West Michigan. Um, but if you have any questions, if your industry doesn't fall in what I've got on those slides, feel free to reach out to me and I'll be sure to either put you in touch with Ellie or let you know if I would be your project manager. And if you have any uh, friends or you know industry colleagues on the east side of the state, I'd be happy to put you in touch with Jennifer. Thank you so much. That's wonderful. Thank you for that information, Kendra. There's uh, there's so much to this exporting. Um, one quick question before we move on. Is there a limit for some of the smaller business? Is there a limit to products that can be exported? Oh, the sky is the limit. <laughs> no, no limit. Um, you know, there's certain things that you can do without filling out export documentation. Um, so kind of that $2,500 level Anytime you hit that level of dollar sale, you need to be aware of what documents you need. Um, and anytime you're exporting anything sensitive, you, you need to make sure that you're following export regulations, which I'm sure Sonia might touch on a little bit. Um, but yeah, we encourage companies to you know, look at the easy countries first, like maybe Canada, Mexico, but definitely sometimes your product might be more needed in a different country. You know, maybe it's China, maybe it's it's Denmark. So those are things that we want to help you identify where the, where the value is for you. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kendra. Um, we're going to go ahead and take it from the national level to take it down to the statewide level. So uh, Weiwei, if you would like to start your presentation from the Michigan Economic Development Corporation. Sure. Hello everyone. Um, my name is Weiwei Lu. Uh, is, uh, my name is Weiwei Lu. I'm an international trade manager at Michigan Economic Development Corporation. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, the international trade program at MEDC that helps Michigan uh, small and medium-sized company exporting. So the international trade program was established in 2000, November 2011. Um, we now have um, our about 10, uh, we have 10 employees, colleagues in our program. The goal of our program is to increase export sales by Michigan companies 
increase the number of new to export small medium sized companies and also increase entry into new market by these companies. Uh, to date, we have assisted uh, thousands of Michigan small medium sized company uh, realize more than $4 billion export sales as a result of our assistance. Um, we can't do this all by ourselves, uh, possibly. So we actually, uh, the way we work, we partner with uh, regional partners around the state, as well as international trade centers around the globe uh, to provide a variety of services to our clients here in Michigan. Uh, we provide uh, expert education, expert training, expert um, related to counseling service. We also organize uh, trade missions and trade shows um, around uh, to the countries that we see the most opportunities in exporting Michigan products. Uh, we also have a grant dollars called Step Grant State Trade Ex uh, Expansion Program, which I will talk about in a minute. Um, through these collaborations with um, regional partners and international trade centers, we were very successful in assisting mission companies exporting. So as mentioned, we have uh, designated international trade managers in each region in Michigan to uh, station, they are stationed in each region, they service and they provide on the ground support, hands-on service to Michigan companies uh, in their region. We also have um, regional export network hosts in uh, different regions of Michigan. For example, in the north, we have net, uh, networks Northwest uh, stationed in uh, Traverse City. We have um, uh, in the central region, we have MSU International Business Center uh, in East Lansing. And in for the West region, we have Bando Global Trade Center in Grand Rapids. And in the Southeast region, we have Automation Alley in uh, Troy, Michigan. So these regional hosts work hands, um, work uh, with their international trade, cent, uh, trade managers to provide uh, support to the companies in their region. Um, I am gonna talk a little bit about the STEP grant, the Michigan State Trade Expansion Program, uh, commonly known as STEP grant. Um, the, the grant is uh, originated uh, in 2011 from SBA, Small Business Administration, with uh, Michigan matching dollars. So the grant, uh, to date, Michigan has always been receiving one of the biggest awards of all states um, since uh, 2011. Um, we, the, the grant actually provide 75% uh, reimbursement for uh, your export promotional activities up to $15,000 per fiscal year. Uh, it's a permanent program, which means um, for qualified company, as long as you're still a small business and meet the criteria, you can apply and receive it every year for as long as you're qualified. Um, what are the, so uh, the eligibility is uh, really simple um, as long as you're meeting uh, the SBA standards as a small business, which uh, normally is 500 employees or less. Uh, although for some next code, depending on your next code, some companies can have up to 1500 employees to qualify as a small business. Um, and your product service meet 51% US content, uh, as well as your demonstrate your commitment in exporting, uh, you're likely to be qualified for the grant. Um, what are the activities that qualify for the grant? So in the past, a lot of the companies in our program apply for trade shows and uh, sales trips before the COVID. So uh, if you're exhibiting at international trade show, uh, all of the cost is eligible for 75% uh, uh, reimbursement by the grant. And if you um, send your employees for sales trip to other countries, that will be qualified as well. 
uh, due to the COVID, uh, the travel is very uh, limited. So now we have uh, a lot of companies apply for other type of uh, activities uh, to help them uh, reaching out to their customers internationally. Uh, for example, e-commerce platform establish um, e-commerce uh, capability in your website or establish um, e-commerce uh, store in permanent uh, international website. Uh, all of the costs related to that will be eligible. And um, international website development, if you establish foreign website or you translate your website into other language, uh, or you, you do international search engine optimization to make sure your target audience are able to find you, these costs are eligible as well. Uh, international marketing and ad advertisements, uh, this including social media marketing, digital marketing, uh, as well as traditional uh, advertisements. Uh, translation service of anything, uh, including your menu, your website, your label, um, your brochures are always eligible. Uh, compliance testing, uh, a common example is uh, C Mark. If you have a product service export to Europe, um, oftentimes in electronic industry, you need a CE mark. The cost of the compliance testing is eligible. Uh, sample product shipping. You have customer request shipping um, samples. The shipping costs will be eligible. Um, and also any kind of service uh, cost charged by US Department of Commerce related to exports. Uh, some, some of the service they charge for gold key market research um, are eligible for the grant as well. If you set your employees for expert related training, uh, the cost of that is also eligible for the grant. So uh, besides the grant dollars, as I mentioned, we have international trade centers uh, in uh, different countries of the world. Uh, we have foreign offices in Canada, Mexico, Brazil, Europe, China, as well as UAE. And through our partnership, we, um, we also have access to international trade centers uh, in different countries of the world. Um, so a total of 92 countries, we, um, we can uh, uh, provide underground support for your expert needs. Uh, these trade centers and foreign offices are not a traditional state office. They're actually private consultant firms who has track records of success in exporting, in assisting uh, foreign companies enter and expand in their market. So they have many years experience and resources and expertise in helping a uh, foreign company enter their market very successfully. So we wanted to leverage their resources to help our companies as much as we can. We contract with these foreign uh, trade centers, uh, these consulting firms to provide customized assistance tailored to the needs of the Michigan company. So as a Michigan company in our program, you can request any type of expert related assistance from any of the countries we have a foreign office or partners. And these services will be um, free of charge to you. It's 100% paid by our program and free of charge to you. So um, as I mentioned, as long as they are able to assist you, you can request any type of expert related assistance. They'll do their best to assist you. But some of the most commonly requested services are uh, matchmaking service, finding you pre-qualified potential customers, uh, distributors or partners and arrange one-on-one -on -one matchmaking meetings for you. We have many companies combine the service with their existing trip. So they're, they're gonna travel to uh, Germany uh, for a trade show. They wanted to maximize uh, the productivity of their trip. They request a matchmaking service uh, to meet with some new potential customers during the trip. So other, other, other companies will do um, a, a special tr uh, trip to just meet, uh, do the matchmaking, meeting with the new potential customers that our foreign office is arranged. So the trip will be eligible for 75% reimbursement by the grant and the service is 100% paid by us. 
So it's a very uh, good deal for, for machine companies to utilize the service. Uh, besides matchmaking service, and other company uh, requests customized mac, uh, market research. So we have company, uh, they wouldn't enter into a new market without done the through market research. Uh, they use our foreign offices to do uh, customized market research to find market information before they can make informed decision. So that's completely available for you as well. Uh, you could do a background check. We have company uh, received a big order all of a sudden from China and they don't know who they are. Uh, our China office can do a background check uh, to, to make sure they're legitimate. Um, you, you could request service uh, consultation, regulatory, custom, logistic, and certification related consultation information as well. So um, yeah, so these services are all available at any time. You could reach out uh, to our international trade managers to request these services. Besides the foreign uh, international trade centers, we also partnered with a variety of um, service providers from <clears throat> the state uh, to provide a service to our companies. For example, we partner with law firm Foster Swift uh, to provide a legal consultation on international IP protection, export control compliance, and also international agent distributor due diligence services. We partner with MSU to provide customized international market research. If you don't know what are the top country you wanted to target at, oftentimes um, you could work with the MSU to provide uh, a recommendation for you with the strong data supports uh, of that. Uh, we work with our great partner, the Endo Global Trade Center. Uh, they provide a variety of um, excellent uh, private and group training on uh, expert related uh, topics. They provide wide credit reports as well as a compliance uh, related, uh, expert re compliance related assistance. We work with IBT Online to, pro, uh, to provide support in establishing foreign websites through our Michigan Online Global Program. We also work with the Small Business Development Center to provide uh, international search engine organization, as well as the early stage expert assistance program. Um, so, so as I mentioned to the state, we have assisted thousands of companies and they reported over $4 million extra sales as a result of our assistance. Um, and most common, uh, most popular countries uh, that we exported, the, the companies in our program exported are Canada, Mexico, China, Turkey, and, and some other European countries as well. Uh, and, Last year alone, we have assisted close to $600 million export sales to 121 countries around the globe. And uh, our program was awarded um, President E Award in 2017, which is the highest award in export uh, service. Um, and that's all for me. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Thank you, um, Weiwei. You know, so interesting, and and it's great to see so much export going. Um, it's it's exciting to see how companies here are are impacting the world. So thank you so much for sharing, and we'll get to some questions for you in just a few minutes. Um, and last, we'd like to to go ahead and invite. Um, Wait, I'm missing a name here. Um, invite Sonia up to uh, to bring in and and bring us home. Great. Well, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity to talk with uh, everyone here today and our great partners. It's nice to have our federal and our state partner uh, with us, who we work very strategically with. So um, I'm Sonia Johnson. I'm the executive director. And our goal at the Van Anda Global Trade Center is to shorten the distance between your company and the rest of the world. And so we do that very strategically. 
Um, we just passed a major milestone for the Trade Center. Uh, so as an outreach uh, center of the university, uh, we just uh, celebrated our 20 year anniversary and this is our founding. We did get a one-time gift from the Van Andel Foundation. Um, to the far left, you can see President Lubbers who was the president of the university at that time. And then Steve Van Andel and his uh, father who were named after uh, Jay Van Andel. Um, and then to the far right is uh, Jeff Meyer, who was the original executive director. And so again, their great forethought and, and starting the Trade Center um, was really, you know, kind of fundamental in getting us up and going. And we've been able to touch many company businesses because of that. And like Weiwei said, uh, in addition uh, to our services, we were recognized at that 20 year mark. So it was really special. Um, so we got the opportunity to go to Washington DC and, and we were awarded in 2019 before the great shutdown. So it was perfect timing for our anniversary to be recognized with the uh, President E Award um, for our service on US exports. So again, we, we really value our partnership with the US Department of Commerce and Kendra and Allie uh, here locally and then also with the MEDC. So we we're a very proud moment, moment for us. To kind of give you a snapshot of all the services that we offer. Um, you know, our goal is to work very strategically with both the federal resources that Kendra covered for exporters, as well as what uh, Weiwei mentioned on MEDC, and we're very proud to be a regional export network um, host for MEDC's STEP program, um, but we try to touch on a lot of different um, opportunities to help you um, grow your business. Um, for example, yesterday we just had a cult culture program on the UK. And it was really interesting to, to learn from people that um, have both lived and worked in the UK market. Sounds pretty easy. They speak English. It's really straightforward. But then they got into the, the details of some cultural nuances and things to expect of working there. And so those are the things that sometimes when you're traveling there or even in this virtual platform, if you can be better prepared. And that's what our goal is to prepare your business to succeed around the world. And as Weiwei said, we are we do have some funding from the MEDC to offer um, either on site if your business is uh, comfortable with that, or virtual training where we can customize it for your business um, to actually really understand how that applies, that regulation or that process applies to your business. So if you're interested in that, I encourage you to reach out to Weiwei, and then she'll do a referral on to us if you qualify for that. And then we've done uh, market research. So we do um, both primary and secondary market research. But again, because other partners across the state are funded to do market research for free, we always make sure that they get those free resources first because we do have to charge for our services. Grand Valley State wants us to be cost neutral and we're not a federal funded, we're a department of the university. Uh, so we want to make sure that your business is getting um, the best value out of uh, your resources through our state and federal partners first. Um, we actually have used many of the services that Kendra mentioned. We've actually done uh, trade missions with the MADC to take uh, businesses over to China, Brazil, and India. And we used a lot of those services that Kendra mentioned in her presentation. Um, and then I'll talk a little bit more about Worldwide Credit Reports in a minute. And so kind of where we get in uh, and are a little bit different, um, we do a really deep dive to help your business fill in the gaps in your existing processes. So if you're just starting out to do export or import, so that's where we're a little bit different. We, we support the entire supply chain. So again, imported materials coming in as well. And I will talk about the FTZ program in just a minute here as well. But we really tried to talk to the business about how they can take existing domestic processes and make sure that those match to meet the export requirements um, and really try to make that as seamless as possible for you. So I've got a team um, of people that help us out with that. So the Worldwide Credit Reports, um, Weiwei mentioned MEDC has funded us to do uh, a limited number of those. So if you are interested, I do encourage you to uh, contact Weiwei, but you can go out to the Van Andel Global Trade Center's website and take a look at some sample reports. So if your company is used to in the domestic of working with Dun & Bradstreet reports, um, it's very similar to that. You can ask some specific questions of a supplier or a customer you're looking to offer terms to. Um, it'll give you an executive summary and you can take a look at a few samples um, and get a, a feel for that. Um, depending on how quickly you need those back, you know, they're anywhere from, you know, $300 to $400, depending on how quick your need is. Um, they're done in business days and country, but I do encourage you to go out to our website and look at those. And again, 
if you are interested, we do still have a few available and uh, ask you to get in touch with Weiwei and she can pre-qualify you to get those free ones that they're funding at the MEDC. So who does the Van Ando Global Trade Center touch? I thought this was really important um, to kind of show you what industries we support. Um, it's all over the board. I think Michigan is very fortunate in that we have a lot of different industries. Obviously automotive is one of the largest for Michigan, but consumer, consumer goods also. So that's both inbound and outbound. Manufacturing is kind of the bread and butter for their state. Um, we have great innovation. And so it depends on what your, your business is. And then um, textiles is another one that we do a lot of uh, very specific uh, questions with. And then who are those people? Who are the people that we're interacting with? A lot of it, is, again, because a lot of our um, consulting is very much operational and execution. Uh, we do a lot with the people that actually are responsible for getting the shipments out the door and, and get them exported. So this kind of shows you who we actually work with um, across the organization. So um, we haven't updated this uh, in a, a couple of months here, but um, we've helped over 29,000 individuals through our different services that we offer. Um, and we have right now 272 members. Um, companies are not required to be a member of the Trade Center, but we try to grow with them. So again, um, as they grow, they get different services. Um, one of the biggest benefits is uh, they get four hours of assistance through their membership, and then they do get discounts on our technical training programs and events. Um, this is just a, a snippet, and it's kind of interesting in that the Van Andel Institute, who does a lot of research for uh, cancer cures and different things like that, we get, because of the Van Andel name, we get a lot of calls for them sometimes, um, and they're sending people our way saying, hey, you, you're the one to help them out. They, they got us mixed up, but um, we're very proud that we've actually assisted the Van Andel Institute on some of their export controls. And so if your business um, may be controlled for um, the technology for licenses and you just don't know because you sell it um, commercially and then you also are getting into some gov government contracting, we can help you out and kind of go through the weeds of understanding what you need to do to meet all the requirements. So what makes us unique as well is since we are based in a normal world on the downtown Grand Valley State campus, but we do cover the entire state. Um, throughout our course, we've employed 56 students, and we try to, to uh, hire students after their freshman year and keep them throughout their collegiate uh, experience. Um, that way they can get a variety of projects. So we average about 100 projects a year that we do, and most of that heavy lifting is done um, by our students who work for the Trade Center. Uh, under the guidance of our specialists. So uh, they go through a uh, project plan um, for getting that uh, bus business what they need for that uh, project uh, and then every step of the way they're checking in with our staff and we're kind of guiding them through the process. It pushes them to um, improve on their communication skills and it's a win-win for Grand Valley State. Here's a uh, quote that uh, one of our uh, favorite and most uh, enthusiastic students um, She's now working for Abbott Laboratories. I think she's based in Ireland right now uh, through their tra training program. Um, but it's just seeing her words and what, what it meant to work at the trade center. Sometimes the students, it'll be really interesting when they, they start with us, they answer, they answer our phones and they're not comfortable with it. They'd be very, very comfortable these days answering a text, but to picking up the phone, it really, really enforces those, those soft skills that they need for employers. As I mentioned earlier, um, we support import. So one program that's available through the federal agency, the International Trade Administration, US um, uh, Foreign Trade Zone Board is the Foreign Trade Zone. And there's seven trade zones located across the state of Michigan. And Van Andel Global Trade Center directs the Kent, Ottawa, and Muskegon Foreign Trade Zone. Um, you can find a link on our website to uh, the other seven um, trade zones across the state. We don't compete because it's geography based. And it's a program that allows your business to import components uh, that are going into your finished goods, make those finished goods here in Michigan because you want to keep those jobs here locally, and then export those goods out through the foreign trade zone program. 
and I'm very much oversimplifying this. There's a lot of um, different nuances um, with the additional tariff regulations and things. Um, they excluded some provisions of getting the full benefit of the FTZ program. But if your company does need to import to keep your material costs low and then you export it back out, um, contact us. And, and if we're not the right zone that covers your area, we're more than happy to get you connected with Battle Creek Unlimited or uh, the zone in your area that covers um, your needs. Uh, but it's a great program to take a look at to get that um, cost and duty either eliminated from having to pay out on your exports and again, keeping those jobs local. And then we're also very proud to be a Michigan representative for the Export Import Bank. Um, we're basically uh, part of their marketing arm, as well as MEDC does it as well, and uh, Department of Commerce or Kendra's team. Uh, we basically let businesses know how they can ensure their foreign receivables or get capital um, material financing through the Export Import Bank um, services. It's a great program if you haven't looked at it for your exports. Um, I encourage you to take a look at it. You can either contact me and I'll get you connected with the XM rep who's covering our state. We're currently being serviced out of Chicago and I'm hopeful within this next year, we might have another Detroit based um, representative, but the gentleman that covers out of Chicago, Jan Blaho is very enthusiastic and very passionate about the services of XM. And then Weiwei did talk to you about the STEP program. It's a great program and I encourage you all to take a closer look at that and, and make sure that uh, you see if you qualify uh, and get those services available through their grant program. And with that, uh, I would like to open it up for anybody that has questions for me. Um, the mute thing, will we ever get over the mute button? Um, just wanted to um, thank you so much for that presentation. And following up on that STEP question, is there any chance that those that the funding for that STEP program will expire? It's to any of you. Wait, wait, do you wanna take that? Sure. So um, the grant is um, either you use it or you lose it. Once you qualify, you have a maximum $15,000 grant per fiscal year. We go by from October 1st to September 30th. So um, if you don't use any of the grant dollars, it does expire. It doesn't roll over to next fiscal year. Um, so you either use it or lose it. But then um, if you use up all your grant dollars, then you have to wait until the next fiscal year to apply for more grant, so. Do they expect those funds to run out though for the, the funding the grant or is that kind of ongoing for years and years? Right now it's set to be a permanent grant program, which means um, we haven't heard anything that um, in the near future it will stop. And the Michigan is very committed with the grant. Uh, we, every year we contribute substantial matching dollars to give to companies. Great, thank you. Um, Kendra, question for you. How long do matchmaking services typically take? Usually about six to eight weeks, um, possibly a little bit longer during the pandemic. It depends on the country right now, whether they're open for business or not, um, because even if our staff is there, they may not be able to get a hold of the companies uh, to partner you up with, but traditionally about six to eight weeks. And also just wanted to comment on uh, Weiwei's, the STEP program, you know, usually it gets to be about this time of year and they start to run short on dollars because everyone has used them up. Um, but I'm, I'm wondering, Weiwei, I I'm guessing there's probably still plenty of funds to go through September. Yes, we actually, uh, since 2011, we have never ran out of all the grant dollars. We, uh, we increase we receive bigger award from SBA each year. We also increase Michigan matching dollars. So um, we have never ran out of uh, grant dollars. Uh, last year, uh, not last year, the year, there was one year, a couple of years ago, was the only year we ran out of all the grant, but we were able to get grant dollars from other program to re reimburse everyone. So any company who applied and get approved has received a grant uh, from us. 
Thank you. Um, Kendra, another question for you. What markets do Michigan companies sell to most frequently? Yeah, so most frequently to Canada and Mexico. However, Asia Pacific area is also strong um, and Germany is strong as well compared to the, the US stats where um, the UK is more of a general market for US exports. But in Michigan, I think because of our automotive needs, we have that connection with Germany and South Korea too. Thank you. Um, I'm, so I'm just reading a question here that came in. Um, all right, let's, I'm just gonna read the whole thing because I haven't pre-read pre it yet. Um, looking at the STEP program, our organization has many needs that fall within the qualified bucket of items covered. What do you recommend as a good first step to better understand where to focus our efforts globally? For example, would you recommend as the best, or what would you recommend as the best way to get started on exporting? For me, I think it, it'd be helpful for them to meet with both Weiwei and myself uh, to get started. We can do some things like look at the market diversification tool that I put in the chat as well. That would help you determine which countries uh, might be a good prospect for you, depending on what your HS code is. So every product has a classification and for customs purposes, once you have that code, um, if you've ever exported before, your logistics team would know what it is. If, if you haven't exported before and need help identifying that, that's something Sonia has a lot of training for, or if you just need a quick question, we can help you with that too. Um, so take a look at your product, figure out what countries are, are in demand of that product, and then um, work with Weiwei to see where you might be able to find some matchmaking services for free in the countries where they have a Michigan representative, and then work with us in places where Michigan doesn't have an office, um, and we can help you with the gold key. And then again, those, those services are refunded through the STEP program if you are small to medium-sized company. Yeah, for us... I'm sorry. Go ahead. So um, we usually, you know, if for a company who has never exported before, we usually work with the company to do a market research to help identify the top uh, target countries for them. And then we also uh, work with, uh, for a company who has never exported, um, we also suggest they start to receiving a service from SBDC for early stage export assistance program and also the Ando Global Trade Center to get the basics of export training so they understand all is required uh, involved in exporting. So that will help them to get a good start. And then uh, once they identify uh, the basics at the top target country, then we work with the International Trade Center to provide further assistance. Great. What are some of the biggest challenges that people run into when they start exporting? Are there, um, what are some of the biggest barriers? Um, so right now, what we see the biggest uh, challenge uh, by a lot of company, not just the start uh, exporting company, but experienced exporter is the international uh, shipping and logistic with the pricing soaring and double and even triple. So that's why it is very important uh, to understand, um, to to work with a really great partner, to have a good planning on the time and uh, arrangement and um, all the expectations. So that's why we have uh, you know, service uh, available like Vando Global Trade Center. They have even the training on selecting freight forwarding, uh, freight forwarding and selecting the best partners uh, that is available for you to, to request the service. Um, and other challenge I see are, you know, uh, the risk uh, involved with uh, payment, uh, with finding the right partners. So that's why it's very important um, for you to work with the, the right partner. Uh, work with us. Uh, we'll hold your hands to make sure that we provide the service um, you need and uh, finding you the right partner. Uh, we have uh, other resources we haven't even talked about uh, due to the time limits that can help you with uh, all kinds of, um, you know, um, capital risk and other um, related exports activities. Yeah. Does anybody have anything else you want to add to that? 
And I think right now, um, because duty rates are, are, have been increased as well as the freight rates, so when you export to a country, depending on how you have set up your sale from Michigan to that customer outside the US, um, there may be additional duties that haven't been seen before. So uh, that's where like working with Kendra's team at the uh, Department of Commerce, uh, the commercial services, they can help um, identify what those costs are in country that you're selling to. Those have gone up considerably. Um, so there's another question that, that came in. Um, do I need to clear the export shipment when it arrives in the country where my international uh, customers are located? Is there any is there any guidance you have on that as well? So I'll jump in. Um, so it depends on how you set up the contract with that customer overseas um, and what you're paying for and what your customer is paying for. Uh, in most cases, depending on how that was set up, um, you're responsible for creating the commercial invoice to export out of the US. Uh, but again, it all depends on those terms and conditions that you say, okay, me as a Michigan exporter, I'm going to take care of these set of costs. And that's included in the price that I'm quoting you for the product I'm selling you. Um, so again, it depends on how you set that up um, and what you're comfortable with doing. Great. Right. Being able to quote the right INCO terms uh, when you, because different INCO terms means different responsibility. So that's why receiving the basics of export training to understand our aspect of export is very important first step as well. Otherwise, you don't even know how to quote uh, 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 by INCO terms. And this could be very dangerous because um, you would quote a wrong term and then you assume different race and uh, responsibilities. Great, we have just a couple minutes left. Is there anything else that you would like to add that you think we need to cover before we, we send people and get them connected with you? So I just want to stress that um, if you're interested in uh, applying for the STEP brand, as well as uh, using the services we provide, uh, it's very simple to get started. Um, we, uh, we have a link that I will send um, to all of you. Um, take five minutes of our, uh, to just fill out our intake form. Uh, our international trade manager in uh, your region will reach out to you uh, to schedule a meeting to get you qualified and established in our system so you can start applying for the grant and receive the services. So, um, and um, yeah, so feel free to reach out to me if you need, uh, if you have a question. Great, thank you. Kendra or Sonia, anything else that you wanna add? I guess for me, is always there is so many opportunities out there, but really take a strategic approach because both Ke you know Kendra Weiwei and I, we our organizations want to make sure that your business continues to succeed. So you know, starting strategically, you know, there's a lot of opportunity out there, and looking where you should go first to have the greatest success. And Kendra mentioned in her um, presentation some tools that are available through her federal agency. Take a look at those, and that will let you look at the globe and kind of narrow that down um, on the variables that will start you out to the best success. And then from there, once you kind of get your feet underway, then it's easier to start to grow that slowly. Um, but again, there's so many opportunities, there's a lot, and you want to make sure that you're not spreading your resources too thin. And then again, if you can augment that strategy and that research and use the step funding, the step grants available through the MEDC, again, I think it's a, a good starting path to, for success in export. And it's really not that difficult as long as you, um, you know, are well thought out and uh, your first steps and, and have a plan going forward. Yeah, I would agree. I would say, you know, there's a lot to learn. I'm still learning after 20 some years of doing this, um, but I would just encourage you not to be intimidated that we have a lot of resources here in Michigan to help you both from the public sector and the private sector volunteers that we work with to, tell you, you know, hopefully share some of their been there, done that stories and that you don't have to fall into some of the traps that they did. But I've worked with companies that are one employee and I've worked with companies who are, you know, Fortune 500. So feel free to reach out to us and don't be intimidated. You got to get started somewhere. 
Great, thank you so much. And I wanna thank all three of you for sharing your expertise with this group. Um, it really makes it much more manageable to have some faces to put together with exporting. So thank you for sharing that. Um, just wanna thank again our sponsor, Blue Cross Blue Shield for this program. And then wanna point out a couple of upcoming events. Um, on June 22nd, Tuesday, June 22nd, from 3.30 to 5 o'clock, we'll be gathering and continuing our discussion on sustainability. This will be a community-wide discussion about what that really is and how you can make an impact in that area. And then in addition, on Thursday, June 24th, at this same time at 9 a.m. on a Thursday, we'll have our next business first session on marketing, advertising, and e-commerce. The, the brand building trifecta. So if you have questions on that, we would love to help you take your business to the next level on that. So again, thank you so much to our presenters. We And we look forward to success in the community. So thank you all very much. Bye-bye.